Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we are going to see the problem minimum score of a path between two cities. Let's see the problem pretty quickly. It's pretty easy problem. It says that you are given a positive integer n representing n cities numbered from 1 to n. Cool. So basically, we have cities from 1 to n. And we are also given a 2D array called roads where roads of i represents ai to bi. There is a distance called di. Cool. Indicates that there is a bidirectional roads when we see bidirectional we think kind of thing. Okay. It can be a graph. Let's see pretty quickly. Like it's cities connected with roads. We can think in a graph form. But let's see. Uh, bidirectional road between cities AI and BI with a distance equal to uh, of this distance I. The cities graph. It also mentioned graph. Graph is not necessarily connected. Which means that okay, I can have one, two cities here. Three, four in a different place not connected with one two i can have five here i can have six here i can have seven here so basically all these are not connected as such it is it can be chances they are not connected cool written the minimum possible score of a path between city one and city n what's the score of a path it's it, it's defined as are uh, two cities as the minimum distance of road in the path so basically if we want to go from one to n what is the minimum path in that whole distances whatsoever we have if they are connected we will see with example pretty quickly but note these three things it's very 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 important i have seen many people applying very kind of hard algorithms because it's it's not even saying it's pretty obvious that something is fixed in this problem what is fixed in the problem it's allowed for a path to contain the same road multiple times which means that we can visit the same road multiple times mark this point another thing which you have to mark is that at least one path exists between one and n which means that one i have some nodes some nodes some nodes another nodes another nodes another nodes another nodes but n will always be there in this whole thing which means one and n are in one component it's not like that okay one is here and n is here and we can't reach from one to n we can for sure reach from one to n cool let's see example very quickly uh, we have this one we have this n which is four i have to reach from one to four so one obvious path i could see is this path which is i have to go to a seven but is it the minimum distance maybe maybe not let's see another path another path is that okay i reach from one to two and then to four which means i have nine five and the minimum out of nine five is five so here the minimum path is five which is for sure less than seven so it is not another path which i can see easily see is okay i, I can go to one two six and it's also said that i can visit the same path as many times as i want so i can also come back and go to four which means I have 9, 6, 5. Minimum is still 5. So it's of no worry that okay. My answer is 5. Which is the output. Let's see another example pretty quickly. We have 1. I need to reach to 4. One obvious option is I can go from 1 to this. Which is minimum path is 4. Cool. What if I just go here. And I just come back. Let's remove this hole. I just go at 2. I just come back. And then go at my four what will happen my minimum path will now come as two you saw one thing what happened right here i purposely like i i knew that okay my four was here which was if i have if i would just want to go to four then i would have opted for this path but then i knew one thing see why i am going at the right side why i'm going at two because in the back of my mind i know i can get an edge two from this two which means that okay i can just go from i just i'm just going to this node 2 only because to get this minimum value as 2 because i ultimately if, if i get this minimum value of 2 which is this 2 i can easily like it will not matter to me it will not matter to me so i'm just moving towards the minimum node and then moving back from there to get to my final node which is node n that is the whole intuition of this problem that i just start from a node and try to go to a minimum node so that when i will come back i'll just come back to the last node which is in which means that if i had the start one which is one and the last node which is 10 let's say and let's say minimum distance edge was right here 
or maybe anywhere in the graph. So my ultimate aim is to go and get that minimum distance so that no matter wherever I go, it will always because it's a minimum in whole of this particular graph. It's minimum in whole of this graph. When I say graph, I mean the component because we earlier saw that we can have many components, right? And we also know that one and n are connected. So it is one component where one and n are connected. I am only concerned about the, that component where one and n are connected. I don't give a f about other components. Cool. Let's see. We had this one. We had this n. I'll just go and find. Okay, what's the minimum node? Minimum edge node in that particular whole graph. I just go and quickly visit that node first. So because I got the minimum value from there, then I'll just come back and try to go to my final node, which is node n. And thus, ultimately, I was able to get this minimum distance node out of this whole graph. And that would be my minimum possible answer. You saw what we did. We just went down greedily to the minimum value. And that is the whole intuition that I just go to the minimum distance edge. Now it's very obvious that okay, if RM we have one component, we just need to find minimum distance edge in that particular whole component. When I say component, I actually mean a graph because see, a graph can have multiple components, and we for sure know that the component one component which we are concerned about is only the one having both nodes one and n. So I'll just think of okay, I'll just start from the node one. And of for sure, I can go to node n in that component because node 1 and node n are having a path. Cool. So to find the minimum distance or basically the minimum edge value in a whole component, we have a few algorithms like standard. You can just iterate on the graph by the BFS. See, BFS and DFS are the iteration methods and union find is an algorithm, right? So firstly, I have seen, see, very intuitional, it's very intuitional that either we will use a BFS or DFS. But if you go and find the solutions, then they will also show you union find. But union find is not the answer. For, like it can be the answer, but it's very overrated. Why? Because see, union find is made to optimally determine which component the node belongs to. And we for sure know okay if a node 1 belongs to a component then our node n will all for sure belong to the same component so i can just iterate on this i can just start with this node 1 and i can just move on that new component only which node 1 belongs to and i can ultimately know that i can reach to the node n so it's like very overrated to actually apply union find <laughs> i just made a meme if you like having like you have a lamborghini with you but still you opt to ride on a sheep for the fun of it. It's just you may find applying in this algorithm. But still, standard is BFS or TFS. We have this graph. When I say graph, a component. We have this component. I just start from one. I just go on to every node possible, every node, every edge possible. And then I'll just find okay, what's the minimum edge value, which means the minimum distance in this whole component. And that is my answer. That is the minimum score I can get. Iteration, you can just iterate via BFS because you want to just visit every node. You can iterate via TFS because your ultimate aim is to visit every node. When I say every node, it means to go on to every edge. And when I do a BFS or DFS, I just go on to every edge also. So that is like both are pretty same. Now with this, I can get the minimum distance and that is it. What is the time complexity? It's O of N plus E. By o of n plus e n in the worst case it can be that we have very scattered scattered nodes let's say all the nodes are very different like one is here and n is one and n are always connected so one and n are in one component then two then three then four then five like this it's very scattered scattered like no edges are there so edges will be very less but the nodes are very more right still i have to make a graph so i have to iterate on every node that's the that's the reason i have this o of n but what if this graph is super connected then i can have less edges but the number of i can have less nodes but the number of edges would be very more thus the complexity of this is o of n plus e n in worst case itself and e in worst case itself that's the reason that its complexity is o of n plus e and both will be done in making the graph itself so it is that space is also o of n plus e because making the graph storing that n nodes storing that e edges that's it we have this O of n plus e. Let's see the code pretty quickly. Firstly, we will see the PFS solution. It's 
very same very standard bfs very standard bfs just a very small tweak in that bfs we will show we will see uh, firstly we are just making our standard graph having a graph node and pointing to what another node and also storing okay from u from this edge 0 to edge 1 which means see i have this edge as one edge having two nodes edge 0 is let's let's say node u and edge 1 is let's say the node v edge 2 is this thing it's a distance between u and v i've just showed okay how it is representing is this a graph we can just make it it's a weighted graph so weighted graphs are made like this now we have this visit array because we need to visit every node exactly once and we don't need to visit multiple times because we just wanted the minimum edge value cool uh, then i'll just push in the queue because bfs is just a queue you push it like you push in the queue you get the value from the front of the queue and just keep on repeating i just move in uh, until the queue is empty i just get the front node which is the first node i just get the neighbors of my u which is the node i just get the neighbors which is v and the distance between u and v which means node and v i just get it i just found the minimum answer which means my ultimate aim is to get the minimum edge value which means the minimum distance value my answer is storing int max at initial and i just need to reduce it by this distance which means i need to find the minimum edge value in this whole graph because i'm starting from one so i'm pretty sure that i'm only iterating on the component of one cool uh, and then if it is not visited then i just visited and the push it child which is node v ultimately i just get the minimum distance edge in this whole graph when i say graph it's component of one and then i'm just good same as for the dfs see what you saw the only thing which i added in the standard solution of bfs was this particular line one line just one line that's it and i'm good uh, same goes for bfs firstly maybe uh, for dfs firstly we make the graph visited array to get the visited then i just start from the one because i know ultimately i can reach n two now i just have this visit to node visit it's just saying okay let's visit it so that we don't have to visit it again and again i just go on to its neighbors just same line answer is minimum of answer and dfs and as we are going on to his child and a dfs brings the information of child so i'm just getting this okay answer is minimum of answer comma whatsoever my child brings information to me and ultimately i just return the answer although it will not matter because we have got the answer so far because we are just doing the minimum of answer every time so that is it that it was a pretty standard bfs dfs solution i hope that you got the intuition why we did it why you didn't find like you can do union find but it's a big like you have to write big you have to apply everything and i don't think it's recommended in this problem even even the even the part of you thinking that a unifying should be applied it should not come at the first place because it's not intuitional because the problem statement itself says that when an n are connected and all that stuff so if it not had been there then i might have considered applying it or anything like that but not so yeah i hope that you guys got the intuition of everything and yes if you liked it then do it right button and then goodbye take care